I've got four sets of clutch fibers to choose from to put back into this engine. This is the stock one. And then I have three sets of aftermarket fibers. That pretty red one. And then this, this fourth one is interesting because the material in the center is aluminum. It's very, very light. Not sure who manufactured it. The wear limit per the manual on these things is 2.7 millimeters. These are all over and above that for sure. This one varies quite a bit, so I'm a little concerned about that. Here's the stock one sitting in the clutch housing. You can see why we upgrade these things. There's a lot of space here, isn't there? Here's one of the aftermarket ones. It has considerable more friction material. It takes up a lot of that area, that air gap that was in there on the stock one. It's taking a little bit of risk using any of these. Uh, this one I know is good, the stock one, but I'd like to upgrade. And I'm thinking that these are probably all good sets. Normally I upgrade the stock ones to the FZ or FZR ones which are similar to these in, uh, in the, uh, this spacing. The new shift detent got here today. You can see there's about two millimeters difference in the uh, diameter of this bearing versus this roller on the original. It stayed in position for me. This clutch pancake bearing thing arrived uh, yesterday. Strange, it came with two different uh, adjusting bolts. I'll take this stock one apart and put that thing on there and see if I can figure it out. It's quite a difference. I did kind of a quick test assembly of this whole thing and adjusted it and I ended up somewhere around there so I think this thing will work. I just need to do real assembly now. By the way, I chose the red clutch. I think I posted on the RZ forum a long time ago asking about this clutch pack and somebody said this was Barnett clutches. I don't know. Hope it works. If it doesn't work, I'll take it all apart and put a new clutch in. Need to finish up this assembly on this this side of the engine. So thick washer. Put some oil inside here. Another thick washer. clutch boss. I've already put the push rod and the bearing inside here in that order. The big nut will get torqued to 65, 65 foot-pounds. tab is bent over. Over here we have the primary gear, the water pump gear, a conical washer, a big nut. This big nut will get torqued to 47 foot-pounds. I always shove pennies into the gears. The copper is certainly a lot softer than that hardened steel. Whoops, I think I need a different socket. Try that again. I'm rich. I chose the red clutch. Finish with a fiber plate. Here's the new pancake bearing. Goes in like so. Flat washer. 
the bearing, and another flat washer, and the pressure plate. I will line up the arrow with this arrow, like so. I have three stock springs, which I measured, and they're well within spec. And three of these, uh, whatever they are, heavy-duty springs. I think I have the other three in my yellow bike. So we'll alternate. I'll put the three easy ones in first. And these are supposed to be torqued to 7.2 foot-pounds. I don't have a torque wrench that goes that low. Put the pennies back in the gears over here so I can tighten these with my calibrated hand and wrist. adjust the clutch. I need to hold this while I turn this. I don't know what else I could have done to get a tool back here and tighten that while I'm holding that. I need my two cents. Here's that pesky engine I need to take the stator and flywheel off of. I have to figure out what's easier, run about 80 feet of airline out here so I can uh, get that thing off on this side or pick this engine up, put it on a dolly and roll it over to the garage. Here's my toolbox for this little project. What do you think the chances are that I have everything I need in there to remove the stator and flywheel off of this engine? I did choose to bring the air hose out here because I'm getting much too old to lift these engines up and down. Step one is done. Removing that cover. Uh -oh. Get that gun. That's not going to do it. So, back to the tool crib. I have a brand new backup unit here. By the way, I don't think that should be held against me that I didn't have all my tools. That could not have been foreseen. So this thing's never been turned on. Hmm. Here we go. That's better. The nut and the lock washer are out without having to retrieve any new tools. Is this reverse threads? Yes. Nice. Try forward. Look at that. Beautiful. So I had to go back for one tool. This guy. Darn it. Like such a loser. I did bring the screwdriver so I could pop that grommet out. Take this other cover off for that neutral switch. Got it. All done. That engine is back in its resting spot for who knows how long. I think it's time to retire this one. I think I've probably had it for 15 or 20 years. I believe it's dead. Or I could do something stupid and take the back of it off and see if I can make it work better. <laughs> I don't know how long I can stay out here today. It's almost 100 degrees outside and a little bit of a short heat wave it seems. Stator installation. I was able to shove this grommet through, kind of pulling on this side without any tools. Um, here's a brand new Woodruff key. It's interesting that they put a little tick mark in here, I think, to keep it secured in there. Oh, I cleaned this shaft off. 
per the Yamaha manual, they say to clean this off with, I uh, can't remember what they said, I used acetone, blue Loctite on the screws. This might be the very reason that I ground down a 10 millimeter socket some time ago, because it's really hard to get in here with a full socket. But with this ground down one, I can get right in there. Tighten these to 7.2 foot-pounds. I always hate putting these flywheels on. There must be a trick to this. The flywheel needs to slide right over that key. I had to shut the camera off there for a while. I've been fighting this thing for like 20 minutes. Um, I've had it on twice, but I never really know if that keyway is lined up properly. But I think I got it down to uh, kind of a feel thing. You can feel when it slides on there proper. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten it up. Oh shoot, hang on a second. I put a mark on this scribe uh, before the flywheel was on there to kind of get a depth setting for that key because if I've shoved it in there I won't really know but uh, I can see that I'm lined up perfect so I believe this thing is on proper got a thick flat washer, a lock washer and blue Loctite and a nut This nut will get tightened to 58 foot-pounds. I have my pennies in the gears on the other side to lock this engine up. The neutral switch wire has a little rubber grommet on it here. Goes in that little slot thing. This guy. Has a special little spot. Sprockets just sit on there loose. I need to see if I have a 16 tooth. If not, I'll have to go get one on order. That 17 will come off. I'm going to call it quits for today. Clean up this stuff. Actually, I may come back out later for a while. I don't know. The only thing that uh, kind of keeps me going on a day like this is this stuff. Vodka on the rocks. Told you it's about 100 degrees out. It's hot. If any of you smart folks out there have a trick to aligning that Woodruff key to the slot in the flywheel, please leave a comment below on how you do that. That was frustrating. No, that's not vodka, it's water.